Cisco instructor Andrea here. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, module four and five. It's all about access control lists. So basically, what is an access control list? Um, it's commands that will control whether or not a router will forward or drop packets. So it's basically a filter. An access control list is functioning as a filter. And you can limit traffic to increase your network performance. So basically, I'm controlling the bandwidth. So if I want to limit the amount of traffic over a link so that it allows more traffic through, I can stop some traffic and allow other. Uh, I can do flow control, right? I can redistribute the routes using access control list filters. Also, security. Um, it's one of the first lines of defense in our network. We can implement access control lists on routers, firewalls, router uh, switches. And a nice thing about access control lists is we can filter the traffic based on several different factors. Source, destination networks. Um, we can do it based on uh, protocols. So I can block HTTP traffic or allow HTTP traffic, FTP, um, ICMP, etc. And I can manage my hosts and or full networks that will be permitted or denied across a network by using the access control filter rules. Okay. So access control lists are basically a sequential list that we enter into the command line, right? And these are known as entries, access control entries, um, also known as access control list statements. I notice that sometimes people do confuse the term access control list with the access control entries. Basically, I have an access control list, right? I'll have an access control list, and what builds that list is the access control entries. All right. So with the access control list, I'm filtering traffic, and this is just to show a little bit of an example. So here I'm denying video to S1. Uh, at right here, right? I can build an access control list that will deny video. Another example is I can allow email or I can deny telnet access. So these are just a few examples of the filtering that we can do with access control lists. All right, so I've got a question for you. By default, are routers configured with access control lists or not configured with access control lists? Right? So by default, a router does not have access control lists figured. Neither does a switch. Right? So everything comes out of the box without access control lists. If you want to implement additional security and or filtering, you would add an access control list after you set up your network and your initial configurations of your network, at that point is when you would want to think about filtering your traffic. By default, a router does not filter traffic. Everything that we do has to be configured into the router. Routers do not apply access control lists on themselves. Okay. Any traffic generated by the router does not have any access control list applied. So in other words, access uh, routers, they communicate back and forth, right? They're sharing information amongst each other in order to learn about routes or maybe learn about protocols that are running on those routers. An access control list cannot be applied to filter that type of traffic. So, for example, we've talked about RIP, we've talked about OSPF, and if you remember with OSPF, they're learning about their neighbors, right? And they do that by sharing hello packets. An access control list will not affect the communication that routers have with each other. So when an access control list is applied, we're actually applying access control lists right on the interface. So whether it's a serial interface, a gig interface, 
right? That's where the work is being done. We apply it and that is when the traffic is looked at. So an access control list will come in to a router. It'll hit an interface. It will, the interface will assess, do I have an access control list? And if so, what are the parameters? Can I allow this traffic to pass through? Same goes once it hits the exiting interface. The exit interface will do a similar check. Are there any access control lists here that I need to implement? So let's break this down a little bit. How does an access control list, what's the logic behind packets coming in? Right. So here we've got the traffic entering a router on its inbound interface. So the router uses its routing table to determine how to reach a destination network. But first, right, the interface is checking that packet. Now in this scenario, there is no ACL, right? So that's what the router assesses. Well, I don't have any access control list here, right? So the next thing that happens is the packet is compared to the routing table. Right, so in this case, it's going to be looking at the routing table, right? If the inbound packet matches a route statement, then it gets forwarded to the exit interface, right? So now it's going to go to the exit interface. And in this scenario, there is no access control list, so it just goes right out, right? Now, what happens if the inbound packet does not match, match a route statement? If you remember, this is where our gateway of last resort would come in. So we would want the packet would be, it would look for a gateway of last resort. As long as there's a gateway of last resort, if it didn't match any of the exact routes, it would go out the gateway of last resort. If there is no gateway of last resort, Right, so in this, let's take a look here. Okay, now in this scenario, we have a gateway of last resort. So the packet would go out the gateway of last resort if it didn't match any of these routes. However, if it did not have a gateway of last resort, that packet would just get dropped, right? Okay, now let's see what happens with an access control list. Okay, the packet comes in. Right, the packet gets tested against the interface inbound access control list before it looks at the route table. If the inbound packet matches a statement with a permit, right, so it's going to get stopped right here at the interface, as long as the access control list is a permit statement, the next thing that happens is the route table will be checked to see if there is a route there. Okay, if the route is there, it gets forwarded to the outbound interface. Okay, now at this point, it's gonna get checked again against any access control list that might be added to the exiting or the outbound interface. Okay, and assuming that is also a permit statement, the packet is going to be allowed to exit the interface. Okay. If an inbound packet does not meet any access control list statements, then it will be implicitly denied. Okay, and it will be dropped without being routed. So we're going to talk a little bit more about the implicit deny as we move through the curriculum. Now for the deny statement, right? So this last one was the permit statement. Now we're gonna look here at a deny statement. So the traffic enters the router, the packets are tested against the inbound access control list. If one exists before being routed, if the inbound packet matches an ACL statement with a deny. So again, now, let's see here, it stops. It's getting checked, and the, so I like to use this analogy of kind of like a guard gate. So the guard is checking, its, it's checking on its uh, log to see, is this packet allowed through? If it's permitted, it will do what we just covered. If it is denied, then what's going to happen 
is that packet is just going to get dropped. It will not be allowed to go through. Okay. If it is allowed, then it will get checked against the route statement and it will get stopped at the outbound interface. Again, it's going to get checked at this point. Now, maybe the deny statement is here. If it's denied here, it will get dropped at this point. Okay. If it, so we're, we're always checking against each interface. So it's going to get dropped. So this is essentially packet filtering, right? We're, we're filtering the packets. I have almost always heard it called access control list. You may have it or hear it called static packet filtering. Um, so the incoming and the outgoing packets are being looked at. Right, the interface is looking at them. It's comparing them to the access control list entries to see whether or not it meets a certain criteria. And if it does, it will do whatever the rule is telling it to do. The rule may be saying deny this traffic or allow this traffic. So the next thing I wanna know is what layers does an ACL function at? Right, so we know the OSI model. What are the layers that it will function at? It's going to function at layer three and layer four. If we're dealing with layer three, right, then what we can work with is source and destination and ICMP messages. Layer four, we can start looking at actual protocols, port numbers, and things like that. So. Packet filtering happens at layer three and layer four. Okay. So here we've got, we're going to take a look and I want you to think about placement of the access control list. So what kind of access control list is best used to filter packets when the network attached to an inbound interface is the only source of the packet. Well, that's an inbound ACL, okay? And then we also will have outbound. So if you remember on our previous examples, a packet comes into a router and it exits a router. So we have inbound access control list and outbound access control list. Now it's important to understand the thought process behind placement for when we get ready to actually start writing access control lists. So when do we do an inbound? So a good thought process for the inbound is if I'm attempting to filter just one network, one source network. So if I only need to filter traffic from this network, I might want to go ahead and put it on the inbound. Right, because that means the work is being done right here. Now, let's say I wanted to filter traffic from both this network and this network. Well, I could put an inbound access control list on G00, and I could put an inbound access control list on G01, or I could just put one access control list on this outbound interface that will filter traffic from both. And again, it may be a deny or an allow. So we're talking more about how an access control list is functioning, like what is it doing? So this is asking, there's a particular um, time when an access control list doesn't do anything. So if you remember from one of the earlier slides, access control lists do not act on packets that originate from itself. Remember, I was talking about if the routers are attempting to talk to each other to make adjacencies and they're maybe sharing hello information, router IDs, hop count, etc. They will not apply an access control list to itself. Okay. Now this comes to the implicit deny. So if you remember, when a router comes out of the box, there's no access control list on it. If we want to have some sort of filtering done, 
then we will apply an access control list. Well, by the mere act of applying an access control list to the router, we're essentially telling the router, hey, we're going to be implementing some filtering here, adding a little security. So the filtering and the access control list take it upon itself. And it's like, huh, if we're adding an access control list, I'm going to go ahead and include an implicit deny. So I may add two or three permit statements. And the last statement will automatically be an implicit deny. And it will block all other traffic that comes to that router. So at that point, we need to really think about what traffic we want filtered and how. And always keep in mind an access control list is going to add an implicit deny at the bottom. Now, in our next video, we're going to go over the actual configuration and we'll see this implicit deny. Okay, so because of the implicit deny, you want to remember you always need to have at least one permit statement. Otherwise, your router will be shut down and no traffic will come through. When it comes to access control lists, one thing to think about is that really the router is the center of the universe, okay? So we're gonna, when we write the access control list and when we think about where we apply them, you wanna be thinking about everything from the perspective of the router. There are a limited number of access control lists that we can put on a router. And again, this does cause a little bit of confusion because I can create one access control list but that access control list can have several different entries. But we're going to, again, go over that more with the configuration. So let's take a look at the limits, and then we'll ask a couple questions about that. We can do, in this scenario, on this router, I can do one for each protocol. Okay, so let's say the router is dual stacked. So it's running IPv4, and it's running IPv6. Okay, so I've got an IPv4 address and an IPv6. So I can have one for each protocol, okay? And I can also do one separate access control list for the inbound traffic right here and the outbound traffic, okay? So they don't, at, this is pointing out they don't have to be configured on both directions, right? I may not need traffic that's coming into my router looked at from my LAN network. I may know that my LAN is secure and I'm not concerned about the traffic or filtering it. However, maybe traffic from out here, I want it to be looked at before it comes into my LAN. Okay, so again, here I can have one outbound for IPv4 and one inbound for IPv4. One inbound for IPv6, one outbound for IPv6. So I'd have a total of four that I could write on this interface. So let's take a look at this. So here I've got a router. I've got F00 interface and F01 interface. Okay, so how many ACLs can be configured on the above router? So let's think about this and what the rules are. So if I can run IPv4 and IPv6, then I know that I can have, right, one access control list per protocol, per direction on each interface. So one access control list per IPv4 and IPv6, okay. one access control list per direction. So I've got traffic coming in, traffic going out, traffic coming in, traffic going out, okay, and one access control list per interface. So if you put it together, so here IPv4 F00 in and out, so that's two. IPv4 access control list on F01 in and out, that's another two, so I'm up to four. Now IPv6 access control list, I can have one going in, one going out for IPv6. So now I'm up to six. IPv6, I can have one going in, 
and one going out. So what's my total? I can put eight access control lists on this router if these are my active interfaces. How many access control lists could be configured for a router with one port configured for only IPv4? So here we've got this one port configured with IPv4. So you should come up with the answer. Remember with IPv4, I can have one per interface, one going in, one going out. All right, F00, access control list in, access control list out. So did you get the answer of two? Then you got it right. So here's just some general guidelines when you're thinking about putting access control lists, okay? So we can use access control lists and firewall routers positioned between your internal network and the external network, like the internet, which is really important because you never know what type of nefarious traffic could be coming from the outside world. Okay, you could position a router between two parts of your network to control traffic. Now you may want to control traffic for different reasons. It could be bandwidth control, it could be um, personnel control of what part of the network they're allowed to get to. You might want to configure access control lists on the border routers that are situated at the edge of your network. Uh, let's see, configure access control lists for each network protocol configured on your border routers, because again, we can control all kinds of traffic, HTTP traffic, FTP traffic, TFTP traffic. Um, we can also um, control things based on ports, okay? And then of course we know one access control list per protocol per direction on each interface. Another piece of setting up your guidelines for access control lists is to think about a few different things. Access control lists it's really important that you are careful with them. You actually wanna get your network up and working perfectly before you start adding access control lists. Remember, access control lists filter traffic. And so you could inadvertently shut down parts of your network or allow parts of your network. And once access control lists are implemented, troubleshooting can be difficult because you may be blocking or allowing something that you didn't intend. So it's important that you take time and plan out your access control list. Here's some guidelines. First of all, take a look at what are your organizational security policies? What are, what's your personnel allowed to access and not allowed to access? Also, you want to write out your access control list. And I'm going to take you through the process that I use in the next video or maybe one of the other videos. And I like to write them out in English first so that I can read exactly what it is that they're supposed to do. Use a text editor to create, edit, and save all of your access control lists. Um, document your access control list using the remark command. We're going to talk about that. A remark command is similar to a description on an interface. So you know how I am with descriptions. Well, I'm the same way with a remark. The better your remark is, the easier it will be to make changes to your access control list, um, remove one that isn't doing what you thought it would be doing. Next, you always, 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 always want to implement access control lists on a simulator or a production, uh, a, a, a testing production lab that you may have it set up. Now let's talk about the different types of IPv4 and IPv6 access control lists. It is really important to kind of understand the different types because that's going to help us when we get ready to write them. So there's two types, standard access control list and extended access control list. A standard access control list is more basic. An extended access control list lets us do more fine tuning. Now in this video, we're gonna mostly talk about IPv4 access control lists, but I'll give you a little bit of the distinctions for IPv6. Now a standard access control list, again, has some limitations, right? So what is the limitation? Notice here, I can only permit or deny traffic based on what? Based on the source IPv4 network. Okay, or the address. Whereas with extended access control lists, I can filter the packets based on protocol type, 
right? And I can do that on source or destination. Um, we can, so again, notice here we can use TCP or UDP ports. I can do it by the application traffic. So I could do HTTP, HTTPS. Uh, I can do it by a source IPv4 address, a destination IPv4 address, or the full network. We just get some fine tuning. So if we look at this example here of a standard access control list, I'm permitting this network. I'm permitting this network. That is the source network. I'm not able to do anything else. And this is the wildcard mask. We're going to talk about that too. An extended access control list. Now notice here, I'm doing a permit statement. And what type of traffic am I allowing? I'm allowing TCP traffic. This is the source network. And it's the source wildcard mask. And for what? For what type of TCP traffic? It is for port 80, HTTP. So I'm looking at TCP traffic and I'm permitting it to port 80. Also, access control lists can either be numbered or named, okay? Um, you will probably develop a preference. I prefer the named access control list and I'll explain why. Um, if we use numbering, okay, there's I can only assign particular numbers to standard access control lists. And this is going to make more sense when we actually start configuring the access control list. So I can assign a number to a standard. It would be 1 to 99 or 1300 and up to 1999. That is for standard access control lists. If I'm going to be creating a numbered access control list and it's going to be extended, then I would use 100 to 199 and 2000 to 2699. Remember, a standard access control list is the more simplified access control list. An extended access control list gives me more parameters. It gives me more fine tuning capabilities. So we can take a look here on R1 and do the access list question mark. And it tells us exactly what the parameters are. So if you're getting ready to write a numbered access control list that's going to be standard, you could use the numbers 1 through 99. It doesn't matter, 5, 10, 15. If you're going to be creating an extended access control list with more parameters, then you would use 100 to 199. Right? And again, it just walks through each thing here. Now also, I could do a named access control list. So a named access control list, I like a named access control list because to me it gives a little bit of a description of what that access control list is doing. So for example, I could name it IP access list uh, extended deny traffic. I can give it that particular name. Okay, so here is what an extended access control list looks like. I'm telling it I'm getting ready to create an IP access list. It's going to be an extended access control list. And here's what I'm calling it, FTP filter. And what is this doing? It's permitting TCP traffic to the, to the port for FTP. The next thing we want to think about is where do we apply these standard and or extended access control lists? So knowing that a standard access control list is a more generic, more general, where would you think you would want to place this? It's best to place it as close to the destination as possible. Okay, so when you are writing your access control list, make sure you have your topology in front of you and look at your topology and ask yourself, okay, so if I'm going to be permitting traffic from this source to get to this destination if it's standard you want to look as start by looking at the destination and then work your say well work your way back now extended access control list since we have a more granular more specific we have more control go ahead and put that as close to the source as possible 
Okay, placement and type of ACL used may also depend on the extent of the network administrator's control. Like there's going to be um, areas of the network that you may not have control over. So you may not be able to put the standard access control list as close to the destination as possible. You might also be thinking about bandwidth. And so that may change where you put your access control list. So remember, standard access control list can be used to permit or not deny traffic only from the source IPv4 addresses and networks. Let's take a closer look here. So in this scenario, right, where do I want to put a standard access control list? The basic rule for placement of the standard access control is to place it as close to the pos as close as possible to the destination. So let's say I wanted to prevent traffic from 192.168.10.0 network. If I'm thinking about, and I want to prevent it from, say, getting over to this network, right? So where would I place this standard access control list if we think about putting it as close to the destination as possible? So the packet goes through here, right? And then if I'm trying to get down here, so I would put it on G01 because that's as close to the destination as possible. Okay, now what if I was trying to filter traffic to this network? Notice here, if I'm trying to filter this network's traffic, right, through here, I'm trying to prevent this traffic, right? I'm going to go through here. I'm going to put it right there on this interface, okay? Because I can only filter based on the source. All right, so now how about an extended access control list? Here is our example in this case. If I want to filter traffic from this network, let's see, if I want to filter traffic from this network, right, and I want to, say, filter it from getting over here, because it is an, because this is an extended access control list and I have more parameters, then I can put that filter on the inbound G01 traffic. Now, a benefit of that is then this router has less processing to do because I've already filtered the traffic at this interface, and that prevents the traffic from going over the network, okay? Now, in this example, they're showing us where we could put the filter here or put the filter here. Either would be fine. However, remember, if the filter is on this interface, it's gonna be looking at all the traffic so it will also look at this 192.168.10.0 traffic. So it's doing work it doesn't really need to do because we're not trying to filter traffic from here. But this is a good example of where you really have to um, think about all of the different things that you want your access control list to do. Other things to think about um, when you're placing the access control list, again, is the extent of organizational control you may or may not have control of the source and the destination network. So that may limit where you can put the um, access control list. Bandwidth of your network, right? You might be trying to filter based on bandwidth, so that could completely change whether you put it on inbound or outbound or closer to the source or closer to the destination. Also, ease of configuration. You know, sometimes it's easier to put one access control list on an outbound interface versus trying to put five access control lists on different inbound interfaces. That does it for covering the access control list concepts. Next video, we will talk about wildcard masks so that we can start to write the access control lists.